This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 711. Yes, 711. Tuesdays we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. No matter how much professionalized wrestling there might be in the world at the moment, we are still here. We will hopefully always be here. Because uh, we could at least hit that 15-year uh, milestone at the end of the year, guys. One way or another. Uh, anyways, this is uh, I'm Sorg uh, uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio. Just me, producer Missy has gone home. She has said I am I am not dealing with drunken Sorg podcast tonight. I'm out of here and I'm going to go hang out in the whorehouse on Assassin's Creed. I don't know. She's sending me weird texts lately. So, anyways. We got a crew with us. First of all, coming at you from Beacon, New York. He is the only Mayhammer with the future endeavored from the WWE, even though many people have those now. Uh, it is Mad Mike. <laughs> Don't remind me. So that's, that's just bad. I, I was going to do a Who Needs the Quickie Mart refrain no. to really get karaoke karaoke Mayhem started. And now you, you just took all the wind out of the sails. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> It was like it was like I had an all syrup super squishy, and Sorg was just like no squishy for you, and slapped it out of my hand. Mm-mm. I'm really sad I did not partake in the 4D cinema, Simpsons cinema, because they had the Quickie Mark next door in Myrtle Beach. So I did. I did. You did. I did that. You did that. It was, I, it was great. Side note, um, because I know they just put it on Disney Plus. Uh, going to see Onward in the theaters. I know I'm one of the few that did. It was strange to have a pre a pre video because uh, you know you get all the Pixar shorts sometimes just, or just rambling in front of those. You got a Simpsons short in front. Yeah, it's the yeah. Uh, uh, Simpsons owns Fox. Yeah, yeah. it was Disney owns Simpsons. It was a startling crossover when I sat down for my I, Disney movie. I have not watched that short yet. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, it's um I know it's featured at the top on uh, Disney Plus on the scroll. So it's like I mean it's under ten minutes. Go watch it. It's it's cute. It's it's about uh, Maggie. It's Maggie. Yeah. What it's, I I assume I assume it is the uh, the um the before the I can't think of the fucking term. What's the story before the story? Sorg. Uh, prequel. prequel. It's the prequel to the Simpsons arcade game. That's what I assume. What? Why? I don't know. Sorg is Maggie. Okay, anyways, um, also with us back on the show, it's been a while, it wasn't up to anything, we're just, we're just giving people stuff to do, uh, Sean <laughs> Phoenix back with us, hello Sean, how you doing? Hello, I'm cool. <laughs> thank you for dropping in with us for, for whatever. Yeah, thank you for, for pointing out the fact that I'm not doing anything, way to make me sound really <laughs> cool. No, no, that means oh, yeah, you're I mean, a good ass than... citizen. Yes! You're a good ass citizen. You're not okay. doing jack shit. None okay. of us are. The only people that are doing shit are morons. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All Sean is doing is going out in the woods and lighting things on fire for photography. Yeah, that, God that's, bless you for it. Yes. That's your, that's your fucking raise an American, but don't go in populated areas. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's all, that's all we ask. Yes. But anyways, <laughs> this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You guys can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out this and past episodes and other fantastic shows that we are doing, like the uh, Monday Mayhem Wrestling Wrap-Up. That was less about wrestling. It was really just me and Mike just kind of losing our minds last night. And I'm okay with that. That's just, we're not even going to try to talk about wrestling. This is the show where we've warmed up, got that out of our systems, and we're going to try to talk about what the world of wrestling is like so these days. about Legos, sort of. No, I Legos was last night. You made your choice. Steamboat <laughs> Willie won. We're moving on. Touch sure. base with me next week. We did not get an update on uh, Matt Carlin's uh, uh, Lego Fever, 
I'm still worried about him. I haven't heard fr- from him since uh, uh, listened to your parents recording on Thursday night. I imagine the living room is an entire Hogwarts castle or a life-size version of the Sorgatron Media Studio. I don't know. Unconfirmed. Anyways, you can also drop us a line at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Uh, and also please follow the Facebook group and page. And that's where we are there every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook, on the uh, currently on the Periscope, currently on the uh, Sorgatron Media Twitch page uh, often. But it was a little tweaky tonight. We're all, always also on YouTube streaming. But of course, the video, wherever you are, wherever you are hearing my voice right now, watching or listening to this, please um, like, star, heart, whatever the function is and also please hit that share button to get the mayhem nation uh to grow uh and and tell people what you're liking about this episode uh i've been watching icelandic wrestling again oh i want a review um anyways uh so uh yes and also please subscribe to us on your itunes uh if you if you like to uh, listen in the podcast form oh he's okay over there he's okay over there you all right over there me yes I don't know. I yes, I, I uh, need to clear my throat. Like I'm getting over a cough. Oh. I don't have COVID, but good. Uh, good. Just constantly need to clear my throat. So this isn't going to be the best interview I've ever done. Well, I it, this is what sinuses. It's 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 just a hangout. It's just a just to see what's going on. You know. Yeah. You know. It's how we do things on Tuesdays. We don't really interview anybody anymore. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. We just sure. like we're like we just, we just get people on the line. Like what the fuck's going on? Uh, but right. Anyways, uh, also, thank you to our supporters at Patreon, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, our friends at the fan of the show level. Vogue Diggity! Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby FJ Town, and Team Hammer Fist. Our friends at the Poppy Club level, Bradley Ruthers. Oh, why did I almost say Dan Rathers? That's weird. Uh, Dave Potter, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys, and the Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy and Kyle Turner, and at the manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com, Farnsworth Investments, and because he forgot to cancel, Mad Mike Enterprises. Whoa. <laughs> it, it does not reflect my lack of support. It just <laughs> reflects our lack of uh, mayhem mania. Yes, it is, but that's okay. There are things in the works. And that's why I'm a little loose because all the things are in the works and we don't have any new plans yet for the Wrestling Mayhem show. And and hopefully some of those get introduced had some really good we're, conversations. We're actually going to do a podcast next week on the roof of the studio. Um, <laughs> on the roof. Is this a good time for me to inquire about access to the roof with my landlord? On yes. the roof. Okay. Yes. That would have been the first question and, I have. And, I the only thing that's up there is the couch and sword, and whoever wants to be the guest, they have to fight their way through one floor of hell. <laughs> <laughs> we. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna start off hot. Uh huh. Start off hot. One sword. floor of hell. Can I? You know, how about this? If if everything goes, if everything, uh, we if everything is works out over the next three months and I am able to renew my lease, I believe in September uh, at which point I will officially inquire and see about writing into the lease of roof access. Uh, I want to get, uh, I know I have a couple friends with drones and do uh, footage. Um, I want to get everybody I can and do an old Raw's war style promo <laughs> with, with as many podcasts as I can on the roof of Sorgatron media and just set up a version of podcasting on the roof sword, do you, as do you epic think as possible. And sword, then pulling up over Beachview and see, you see the city skyline in the background. This is out there. I remind me to clip this out later, send it to some friends. Like mm-hmm. we need when we're allowed to sword. congregate again, this is what's going to happen. Do, do I need sword. a permit for that? I'm alone. So do, do you think basic sickness would cover that version of the raw is? Oh, he will show up. He, no, no, no. He, he will come and perform live or to lip sync the theme song for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Excellent. I, Excellent. I unequivocally, he will do this if I, pre- if I present this to him. <laughs> and, and, we need, and we need to film Chachi 
doing the parental discretion is advised, just like Joey Styles had the old ECW intros in 1996. Chachi has to be like like the, we get the purple couch over there. He's like in the corner and he's got yeah. like a suit on and he's and, like, like a how Dutch I angle in on in on his side head. Like parental discretion is advised. <laughs> like it, like he's never looking straight on to the camera. It's always to the side and his head's always tilt like a Dutch angle. It'll be great. <laughs> I love all these ideas. Mark it. <laughs> mark this. I have no producer to mark this for me. Fans, I need a I need a I need a I need a chat room producer to help uh, uh note these good ideas. We need a wiki. We need to get one of those fandom wikis for the show. We're oh we're way God. overdue on that. Who would, who would fill in the lore? Who would fill in the lore? <laughs> so, oh, there's so much lore. I mean, there's some people with time on their hands. I don't know. Uh anyways, what the hell are we doing? Hey, so you 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 alluded to it. Um, Money in the bank is happening, <laughs> and I don't know what wrestling is anymore as a whole, mm-hmm. but it's, it's creative, and I don't know what the I huh. That's my reaction <laughs> to Money in the Bank right now. <laughs> First, we, I, I, first we, we should start. Sean, uh, have you heard what's going on with the Money in the Bank match? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, thoughts? Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Of course you love it. You... <laughs> now, now, the real question here, the real, real question, is anyone going off that roof <laughs> giant style in a monster truck? <laughs> is that happening i was i was gonna say uh you beat me to it uh paul white might do it uh <laughs> i feel like he may allude to it i don't know i don't know yeah, how that netflix it. show somehow yeah <laughs> we'll see. um so so it is for I, the- I, I i'm imagining alistair black black masses someone off that roof yeah <laughs> If I wanted to win a match and I had the opportunity to kick someone off a roof, mm-hmm. I'd do it. I'd do it. So there, there was there were some images. I didn't share it because I don't like to share spoiler stuff. But there is an image of what the top of the roof looks like. Apparently, yes. that's been floating around. Have you seen this? It, it's, I mean, it's it's what you expect. It's the ring. It stuff is hanging like they rigged something. It doesn't look as uh, dangerous as I felt like it would uh, in the long run. Um, and they're not unfamiliar with putting a ring on the roof and filming something. Again, we were talking about the Raw's War. <laughs> it's the worst own introduction from back in the day. Uh, so it's been 20 years since they've done that. But, um, you know, I'm sure they know where to get a crane. I, I still, we also don't have confirmation if these two matches are happening at the same time. That's weird. So, how, what was, where did you get the idea that they're happening at the same time? What was the commentary? They did 12 superstars. And they show two briefcases being hung at the same time. That to me is concerning. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's like this is an intergender match, and this is just what we're doing? I mean, hey, if we have Shayna Baszler literally throw Apollo Cruz off the roof, I'm here for <laughs> it. How? <laughs> how? I, so I mean, it's so they're doing this thing. And mm-hmm. and there's got to be points where we like somebody is taking a detour into like Vince's office or something, right? I mean, like uh, probably Triple H's office, probably tri- or Triple H's office, or Let's be real. Um, there's going to be some kind of gag in the cafeteria. They have that. They have a cafeteria, right? I mean, I would they, imagine. Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's they have WWE pinball machines around. <laughs> like I, I'm just I'm thinking there's going to be stuff in the gym. Hmm. Hmm. There's gonna be stuff in the gym. Like I'm just thinking of the uh, the tour Johnny Gargano took around the whole uh, the corporate building around Valentine's Day. So pretty so, much every every spot that they hit up in that. So that is a preview. That is tape study, if you will, for for what's yeah, about like, to happen here. <laughs> tape study. <laughs> yeah, if you want tape study, just follow that and then look for our truth and Carmelo's to um uh, their mixed match challenge winning trip to Stanford. And and then, yeah, <laughs> and then watch as Tina Key matches in the chat room the old WCW Tower of Doom matches, uh, just in reverse. 
Oh, you have to watch a match backwards. If you sync that up with Dark Side of the Moon, it also <laughs> tells you who raised the briefcase at King of the Ring 99. <laughs> Fun fact. Hey, that was never revealed, was it? No, it wasn't. Huh. Wasn't but, it implied that it was Boss Man, though? Yeah, but you can never really be sure. Like, they fired, like, they didn't get, like, fired the week before, and mm-hmm. the stipulation was that the corporation couldn't interfere, and then the next night on Raw, Boss Man's back. Right. Hmm. So it's like really implied, but they never outright said it. Yeah, they never they never actually said it, and there was no like GTV or or hacker Ali to really get to the bottom of it. But right. Uh, oh, the hacker. That's right. I keep forgetting that that's Muhammad. That's that's uh, Ali. Um, yeah. But uh, 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 Tina, t- confirm this. Uh, Tina says there's a bowling alley. What? Uh, I don't believe so. Is there in general or at the office? At the at the office or? I don't know. I, I mean, if it's next door and we just as far, uh, as far as I know, there's no bowling alley. <laughs> that wasn't in the welcome packet the first time around, right? So <laughs> yeah, it definitely, you know, we we they would have asked for your shoe size. Yeah, um, your <laughs> left, your righty, average. Um, there would have been there. Yeah, average. There would have been team names like um. Oh God, no! I can't. I was. I thought I had, would come up with a a wrestling themed bowling name while I was vamping, but I did not. So, no, so now yeah. I'm trying to think of one, and I'm blanking on that. Yeah, the only thing I can think of would be something the, really ball, cool. the bowling balls Mahoney. There we go. Sorry, Sean. What were you saying? I said the only thing I could think of would be something related to pinfalls. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, we. This bout is scheduled for Pins Fall. There we go. Pins <laughs> Fall, yes. Uh, well, yeah. There is the kingpin Brian McDowell, who was an actual wrestler that was a bowler. So, I mean, uh, here in the area. So, uh, we- and, and also, if there is a bowling alley, um, I will say that the New Day, the Iconics do not take advantage of it because Up, Up, Down, Down had a bowling tournament. It was pretty great. Was that an Up, Up, Down, Down, or was that a WWE game night? It was up, up, down, down. It was it was a four team tournament. It was the New Day, the Usos, the Bar, and the Iconics. <laughs> Tina's saying maybe she's mixing up her headquarters with Funko. Yeah, I, I think I think that's what you're mixing up, Tina. That feels like a Funko thing. The, the... Yeah, that definitely feels like a Funko deal. Jeez, I um I, I so the, uh, once again, like after WrestleMania, we saw the Boneyard match. We saw the uh, the uh, Funhouse uh, Firefly Funhouse match, and just kind of. Um, determined this is what wrestling is, or even what we saw in um, Ch- Champa versus uh, Organo oh, yeah. in the was it an empty arena? Uh, empty arena, no holds barred match. Un- okay, empty arena, no holds barred match, which which did what it did. Um, people love wrestling. Oh, actually, on top no, that was what AEW called it. They um, they they just called it one last beat, whatever the fuck. That okay, means. okay. So, so like this is these are this is how we're doing our big matches. They're a big theatrical thing. I guess we shouldn't be we shouldn't be surprised, but how could we not be surprised by this? Uh, so, um, I I don't know. I just don't know. This is weird. It's 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 not settling. It's not setting right with me. And maybe you know at least going into this so far. But I don't know. Um. I like it. I think that, you know, like they're really taking advantage of the fact that they have the opportunity to do things that they wouldn't ever have the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like with this money in the bank on the roof match, like no way could they, you know, why would you ever do that without the social distancing rule? It'd be stupid to do that. So now it's like, well, hell, like let's do something weird. And I feel like that really kind of sets it apart and makes it feel different from your Raws, your SmackDowns. Because like when I watched WrestleMania, it didn't feel any different than watching Raw and SmackDown other than this sign in the entranceway. Yeah. But the fact that they're doing this, I, I, I assume the whole show isn't at Titan Towers, but they're doing that, which makes it feel different in a way. So I'm all for weird stuff and opportunities that they wouldn't normally have. Hopefully someday we get a show in the woods or something like that, and they get like run out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's the bowling match is close to the woods, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we've 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 done that a little bit uh, with the Wyatts and stuff, but uh, it, it yeah, and it, it's kind of like how where can we go? It, it's almost like hey, we're tired of doing these shows in the performance center as well, 
right? And 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 what can we do to make this different? Make something special? Because if you just did the Money in Bank match with in the Performance Center, like that just doesn't that doesn't right. that, that doesn't seem like it works. It doesn't, doesn't work. No. And you can do it as far as like you know the orders and everything. Um, you know it, it's you can probably do smaller crews doing what they would be doing for filming in that environment, I guess. Right. Uh, so there better be a helicopter flyover or something during this thing. It's just gotta be like, it's gotta be, if they do it, it, they better be going all in on this concept. And it (coughs) it is the most epically shot thing like that. Like I want, I mean, we get this for reality shows all the time with the flyover of like even the Ninja warrior course or something. Right. So like, why not? You know, this, this can be, I'm I'm just kind of worried with the participants. Just with who they have on hand. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it's more dangerous. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm just thinking, like, Apollo Cruz, okay, Alistair Black, okay, Rey Mysterio, sure, maybe ten years ago that would have been no. really cool, but and like, and I feel like if ever there was a time for Cesaro, it's now. Like, but. But we're not doing that, and it and King Corbin's probably going to be in it, and that's just going to make me sad. <laughs> also, remember, like this is this is not going to be live. This is going to be pre-recorded. Oh, of course this not. is going to be edited and pieced together, and it's not like <laughs> it, it's not like you're sitting there watching somebody go through a full match of yeah. this, right? Like this is, um, you know, it's a production, so that could help in a lot but, of these yeah. cases. Um, but it, in or it could get convoluted if it's not um directed properly when you have six to twelve people um um interacting in this thing, right? So I, I yeah, and like we we don't like they start on the ground floor. Mm-hmm. If you really have to go up ten flights, like I I don't know if you're filming in an elevator, if you're filming in a stairwell. If someone's just gonna fucking jetpack their way up, everybody like, wears a GoPro. Just <laughs> you know, oh, right? Oh boy, oh boy, that, just, that would, no, Sorg. I've seen Lacey Lacey Von Eric's POV wrestling. We don't want that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, every, every couple of months, I have to reference that that was an actual thing that exists, and you can find on YouTube. <laughs> I've never heard of it, but I have to dabble now. It's it's a little unnerving. <laughs> it's not like I'm I'm sure it's uh listed somewhere over on Pornhub too, just because. <laughs> hey, if if the Gargano Champa match is on Pornhub, <laughs> wait, is it? I don't know if it is or not. Like some, someone made, someone made a screen cap of Triple H sitting in the corner, like waiting for them to start, like. Daddy watches his two men fight over his affection. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is- I'm like, I I never knew if that was real or not, but would it shock me? No, it wouldn't. I hear I hear uh, a lot of people are uploading things like movies and stuff to like those websites because they have less restrictions on copyrighted stuff. Yep. So like, if you like if you're looking for a stream of like a new movie, like that's where you'll find it rather than YouTube, which mm-hmm. is insane. You telling me that I can probably find Trolls Trolls World Tour on Pornhub? I'd be disappointed if you couldn't. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I bet eight miles on there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you don't find it, you're probably going to find a reasonable um, um, uh, related uh, word related thing that may also be of interest or scar you for life. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyways. Well, guys, uh, some things that I hopefully won't scar you for life are uh, some things over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, IndieWrestling.network, a lot of uh, action going on over there. And despite the downturn in live events that we would have been producing, I don't know, something like six or eight of them this month alone, 
Uh, there are a lot of releases coming out, including uh, the rest of the episodes for Rest with Rigatoni, uh, Rise of the Nerd with Lewis the Nerd, chatting with uh, Marcus Mann and Brandon K, uh, as well as some best ofs. Uh, a good look at the uh, uh, career of Shane Taylor in the Pittsburgh area is now part of that, made in the 216. And also, uh, if you have not had the opportunity, please go over to the, uh, we have a COVID-19 uh, support page where we've listed a lot of uh our you know friends of the network friends of indie wrestling.us a lot of people featured on there uh with their pro wrestling tees with their patreons whatever applicable uh that they have going on that we can list on there uh that we're able to find that we're aware of uh so if you're if you got that and i know i know some people in this past week i think matt carlin's was like i'm getting my stimulus check and he yeah. went down the list and he's like i'm getting some people's t-shirts uh mm-hmm. apparently Dolph Ziggler has been doing the same thing so <laughs> yeah, I haven't got a notification from either of them purchasing many of my shirts so. hey, oh oh no <laughs> oh no listen Dolph Ziggler and Matt Carlins get, get that get that Sean Phoenix merch over there <laughs> So, uh, no, but please, uh, and thank you everybody that is supporting the show, uh, supporting the network. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it, it, everybody that's staying on there, you know, I, I'm very thankful. Like the numbers, I, I expected to, to be taking a hit, uh, with the network as well. Uh, but you guys are hanging out there. Even the numbers are up and I really, I guess you guys need have time to watch all that back catalog. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much for supporting Indie Wrestling, supporting the Indie Wrestling Network. So we can make sure we're still rolling or, and ready to go as soon as this stuff drops and we get back to uh, producing wrestling shows. But in the meantime, doing what we can to get out there and make sure, you know, we keep Sean ac- occupied here and uh, <laughs> and check out our Indie Mayhem show episodes uh, listed on there. Well, uh, we've been doing quarantine hangouts with uh, a number of indie wrestlers, just kind of checking in, making sure everybody's OK. Yeah, see what's on everybody's mind as uh, things go here. And uh, and and see where we're at with that. The order has been made, and the delivery should be in route as we speak, says Matt Carlin's. So wow. <laughs> he has he has hit it up. So uh, I'm again, gonna have to check my email. <laughs> Sean Phoenix is checking his email. Uh, <laughs> Sean, you got some new barge coming out soon, right? I do, I do. Speaking we're gonna be which. we're gonna be uh, releasing it soon. I don't like. I'm really weird when it comes to like. I don't like putting out teasers. Like I like dropping stuff all at once. So like a select people have seen it and I know mm-hmm. you are one of them. I am um, really excited about this one. Uh it's either gonna people are really gonna love it or they're really gonna hate it or they're gonna have no clue what it is. So the nice thing is like like there's a reference, but I think I think people that are just fan of fans of you will appreciate because it it's a cool design. Uh so no, I think it's yeah, you, you, it's got something cool going on there. Uh, we, just, uh, we just need to tweak the graphic a little bit because it will not be on a black shirt. I'm really excited about that. Really? Yeah, it's not going to be black. It it might be my least favorite color ever. Happy, so how, really, how anti ECW of you? I know, right? <laughs> Very weird. Well, like everyone has black shirts, and like I have black shirts because I like wearing black shirts. Yeah. All of my shirts. I'm wearing a black Power Ranger shirt right now. <laughs> He he wasn't even my favorite character. I got a black Power Ranger shirt because I like wearing black. Mm-hmm. So if I was a Power Ranger, it would be I'd be the black one. But regardless, um, and also like it fits the graphic, and I want to be able to look out into a crowd and immediately see who's wearing my shirt because mm-hmm. I don't think anybody in the area has this color. So that's also got me a little bit worried. Like, man, I hope it sells, but we'll see. Oh, okay, Matt Matt Collins said. He didn't get one of my shirts. Oh, what so, the hell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he'll, he'll he'll get around to it. He'll get around to it. <laughs> we'll we'll pressure him into that. So I'm overdoing my shirt buying too. So, uh, but <laughs> I've been a little busy. Um, <laughs> that's a good point, Bonner. Uh, Vince always wanted to make movies, right? Uh, so, so it was a weird week last week. And I don't, did we we didn't even did we even talk about tw- wrestling Twitter after dark last week? Because oh, no, 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 no less said about that. Part. Okay, because I know part of it was I saw a little more of Sean than I wanted to. <laughs> 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 uh, so there yeah. were two extra X's at the end of your name, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, all right. So let me let me let me uh, explain what happened here. Okay, exactly. Okay. 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 I saw one of my one of my favorite like artists did a, a photo shoot with his wife. 
and and she was in a field naked. And I was like, haha, that's funny. And like I commented on it and I was like, hey man, let me know when you need me to be the model. Ha 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 ha. And then I was thinking, like, crap, I've got nothing else to do. I'll just go, I'll just go into the woods and just do it myself, but I'll breathe fire. So it's you know, a, my spin on it. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at the pictures and I was like, eh, I didn't really like how they came out. Uh, these aren't going to see the light of day. And like, I don't want people from my Clark Kent job to see it. And like, wow, he's really gone off the deep end. And then this wrestling Twitter after dark thing happened. And I went, well, hello, this is an opportunity. <laughs> <to do." laughs> so that's what, like, I was like, well, I guess it was meant to be. And I gained like 10 followers for it. So that's, pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> that was a good night for exposure wasn't it exactly yeah because it, was, it got like over like 150 likes on twitter and i don't really interact too much on twitter to like like i get i, I notice more like i get a lot of likes on facebook or mm-hmm. instagram so like i wasn't used to that many likes on twitter and i was like what in the world is going on <laughs> like this is weird all these people that i don't know are seeing my bare ass <laughs> Uh yeah, it, it it was a weird week with that because it, it was a it was, again I don't know if we talked about it on the show but while this was going on, uh, Mad Mike was on Twitter watching the I, main, I was doing the exact opposite. Yes, the main event kids movie on Netflix that WWE put out uh, okay. uh the week that weekend. Uh, so, My buddy's actually in that. What's that? My buddy is actually an extra in that. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, it's like a quick like thirty second. Uh, 30 second shot. He's an extra. Like the kid, I don't know if they're going to like try out or whatever, but uh, you can see him standing next to this guy, and, like his arms are crossed, and he's laughing at the kid. And I know, um, loyal uh, fan Tina Keys, uh, from the Seattle area. I don't know if she knows that he's in it, but it's our our friend Scott Henson. If she's watching this now, oh, uh, mm-hmm. shout out to her, she's our friend Scott Henson in that. Nice, nice. And I wondered, I was waiting for the report of, like, check out what indie guys are in this kind of thing. Right? Yeah. So, cause, like, like, you could tell, you, you could kind of tell just, like, okay, these guys are definitely wrestlers, and they're not WWE guys. You know, right. like, you can kind of tell. And, uh, and, and, and it's like, okay, where are they? So, um, that's right. awesome. That's awesome. The best part is, like, his, his wrestling persona in real life is a half man, half tiger. And I guess he showed up to the shoot with his gear mm-hmm. and they were like, Oh no, you can't wear that because that's like way too over the top. <laughs> but like he's standing next to a guy with like a American flag Cape. So like really con- So he's, it, it contradicts what they told him to do. <laughs> so he's wearing this. Yeah. Tina knows big cat. Yeah. He's just in this like big red singlet, which is like so weird to see. He looks like a, like a um, a, what are those things those people wear for like the anim like for video games? You know, what I'm talking about those suits that they can like get the recordings. Oh, like like the mocap suits. Yeah, yeah, that's what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so out of left field. <laughs> wow, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of funny because I, I imagine it's, it's probably a lot. Like Badger was just telling us last week about when she was on when she did the. Thing of the OBGYN for the 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 Maria s- yeah. shot uh, for twenty four seven title. Um, it was just like you know you show up in the most conservative thing possible. You know, right? You, you don't stick out, and that's how you get in with WWE. And I, I wonder if the movie shoot was. I mean, it's a WWE film, so it's probably like a mix, right? You know, since they're dealing with wrestlers and and that kind. Of, and I imagine you know most of the people up for that are people that are already in the system somehow, right? Well, any anyone that had lines. Yes, people were people you know. Oh, absolutely. Like, like Mia Yim, Keith Lee, like Otis. They they were all Babatunde, obviously. You mm-hmm. know, the, the big Shahil of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, joke? Which played out well, by the way. Like yeah. it, it, yeah. it, once you got past it a little bit, you're just like, this is actually kind of a fun movie. So. And I'm I'm I I kind of loved it. Mm-hmm. They had it, it, but I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's great. It's honestly great. Mm-hmm. I figured it was like, I mean, I expected it to be a kid's movie, mm-hmm. but you know, like it can't be that bad. I've seen the happening. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's all right. Okay. There's actually both have both those movies 
the uh, the main event and the happening have deadly winds. Shut up. That's not it's not a joke. No, that's not a joke. No. It's not a joke. That applies. Wow. I, I, I won't spoil the specifics on the on the version in the main event, but there are some deadly wins. You know, there was a lot of jokes in, in main event, Mike, that reminded me back to the kind of toilet humor that was in No Holds Barred. Yeah. I mean in the long run, right? Yeah, like it's it's basically if if Lucha Underground was held in the No Holds Barred arena, mm -hmm. but aired on Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Or like, or like, if Mike Quackenbush ran Lucha Underground. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> simplify it. If Quack ran Lucha Underground, it would be very similar to the main event. I feel. <laughs> okay. Okay. I dig it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because because now you're picturing it, aren't you, Sork? Yeah, I want to see the show. It's like <laughs> it's a Saturday morning slam. I wanted to see. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 Saturday morning lucha. <laughs> it, yes. Oh man, that would be yeah. great. That would be amazing. With Daniel Bryan fighting a fucking bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be. <laughs> Oh boy. So this is so this this is an interesting move for them. Like this is a deal that they, you know, we heard about like, you know, probably almost a year ago. Hey, there's stuff coming to Netflix. Is this kind of like the perfect spot for them? Because I mean, if you look at a lot of those movies that they put out in the last uh ten years, it feels like stuff that should have been straight to Netflix in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I, well, I, I, and I, I, and I say that as there's a place for those movies, right? And yeah. and there's a lot of great stuff coming out straight to Netflix. Right. What I wish we could parlay this into, I want to see Netflix do a mockumentary of The Undertaker. Oh, kind of like, like um, kind of like the Scooby Doo Scooby Doo Speed Demon movie. That no, they did. no, no, like like. An actual, like a documentary style show, like Tiger King, <laughs> but about the character of the Undertaker. Okay, and I and I want like, like um, like mock-ups of of like a man, like a man in gray gloves making coffins back in 1993. <laughs> like don't like don't use real footage. Yeah, that's the key. That is the key. The only real footage you show is like is like of the current Undertaker talking about what he, what he has been through in his life. Mm -hmm. Like keep it the strictest kayfabe possible. Isn't this a possible? Didn't like, they do like, this? I want Kane on there talking about how his brother tried to burn him alive. <laughs> I want that in there, and, yeah. and I want the Sasuke sisters to direct it. Like it'd be like it, it, it starts with like you're on Undertaker and just be like I always had some relationship troubles with my brother Kane. I tried to burn him alive once. <laughs> well, not just once. Yeah, that's many true. times. Several times he has tried to do that. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of, yeah, go speaking of the gray gloves, uh, first of all, I love this idea. But you brought up the gray gloves, and I will die on this hill. And I haven't really made it public other than a random Facebook post. So here it goes. Here's the opportunity. When the Undertaker vanished, he was wearing gray gloves. So that was his look, mm -hmm. right? That's the Undertaker we knew and loved. Then Ted DiBiase said the Undertaker was not following him. And he controlled the Undertaker. And when we saw Ted, Dibi Ted, Ted DiBiase's Undertaker, he had gray gloves. Paul Bearer said, no, this is the real Undertaker. He had Purple gloves. Now, I'm no expert here. We, as human beings, recognize patterns. We have no reason to believe Purple Gloves Undertaker was the real one, other than Paul Bear saying it, because we've never seen it before. Are you like first Ultimate Warrior died on on me right now? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying. How can we... Are we sure the right Undertaker won? Maybe Paul Bear was lying. Uh, you know, I I guess we'll just have to ask Paul Bear. Oh wait, oh. The Undertaker buried him in a concrete crypt. Because to cover he up the real Undertaker. Oh, oh, 
Uh-huh. This, yeah. this yeah. just this just came back around. Yeah. 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 And and it's kind of funny how like it was never assumed when the Undertaker had Greg Gloves that he was Paul Bearer's son. But lo and behold, once yeah. Purple Glove Man comes out, Paul Bearer was stooping the Undertaker's mom. <laughs> Sean Phoenix, Undertaker Truther. Like, <laughs> I've seen so many, like, like, you play Mortal Kombat, you both pick Scorpion. The second one introduced is going to be the color difference, you know, the one that's not the you know, player one, yeah. the, the the fake one. Okay. So the purple Undertaker should be the fake one. But purple is also a universal su- symbol of rebirth. Uh... See, I mean, you know, you got to go both. You got it. You got you got both sides. Of the issue you got to see mm-hmm. every perspective. Yeah. And history, I hate to say it, history is written by the winners. It is. Where, where is that Greg Love taker now? We don't fucking know. That's very true. He, very he true. could, he could be, he could, he could have been buried alive under that house in the Boneyard match for all we know. Yeah. Possible. Can mm-hmm. we bring that back around? That's great. Yeah. Maybe That's Greg Love taker is the one that married Sarah. <gasps> No, no, here's the thing. Wasn't wasn't the under faker played by um Brian Adams or Brian Clark, one of the, one of the guys who played in Chronic or was in Chronic? One of them, yeah. And then didn't he end like end up becoming one of the members of the disciple of the apocalypse? Uh maybe the I, I'm if, it, sure. if it was if it was Brian Adams. I'm pretty sure. Can someone Wikipedia this for so, me? So, so Crush became part of DOA. Um, Hold on, Chronic man. was was Crush and Atom Bomb, wasn't it? The no. Undertaker was Primetime Brian Lee, who was also known as Chains. So, okay. Ah. So the same Undertaker ended up becoming a biker. <laughs> Oh We're, no! We are and through the know. looking glass here, people. Am I on to something here? I or think you're on to something here. And honestly, honestly, the Undertaker, after he got rid of his double, after he got rid of his brother, he was recruiting disciples of Apocalypse. Oh my God! Yeah, it all connects. Yep. It all connects. We don't even need Leslie Nielsen to crack this code. <laughs> That's good because I don't think he's unavailable. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's no. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. Okay. Wow. This, we are we are we are through the looking glass, people. Well, and now that we've <laughs> unveiled well, that truth, I, I really had a great match with Shawn Michaels in an alternate timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well. In, in the alternate timeline, Mark Calloway had a really shitty eight man tag against Los Bariquas. <laughs> <laughs> what if they just decided to switch? What if they just said, you know what? <laughs> Undertaker's forever. It doesn't matter who plays so, them. Fre- so, they, so they were going to Freaky Friday this shit? Yeah, they're going to Freaky Friday this shit. It was Freakier Friday. It was like a freaky Sunday because it was a pay per view. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right, you, all right. How about this? What? Oh man, what if the purple gloved Undertaker wanted to get rid of the gray gloved Undertaker, so he burned him alive? Right. Follow me. Follow me. And then the gray gloved Undertaker came back as fake Kane to try and get revenge. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. Wait, when was fake Kane? There have been a couple there have been a couple fake canes. Oh. There have been a couple fake canes. There was the May 19th Kane. Okay. Do you remember May 19th? I remember May the, 19th. Yeah, the fucking the hook. What's the other one? Uh there was an there was another fake Kane too. Oh no, I'm thinking of when the Undertaker dressed as Kane. Oh, uh, okay. And and 
the Undertaker's original name. Kane, Kane the Undertaker. Undertaker. Boom. We solved it. Roasted. Case closed. Yes. Oh, this is a crazy wall away from being real. Wow. All right. Matt, Matt Carl, if you're in the chat room, I expect you next week to have a pushpin board with all of these connected with bits of string. <laughs> I expect all of it. If anybody's good at infographics as well, we can just take this audio portion and turn that into one. Like that's also an option, I think. <laughs> yes. With all the yes. pins and yes. Sure. Holy crap. Um I need to catch my breath after that one. And uh <laughs> and I wasn't even talking. It was you talking. What's that? We're talking about we're talking about wrestling. Yeah, more than usual, uh, amazingly, actually. <laughs> I mean, this is what happens when Sean Phoenix doesn't get to wrestle or go to concerts is he just his brain just keeps going and going and going. And the worst part is I just spent a year on the sidelines of not wrestling. So now I'm like back into this like, oh, no, like it's like Groundhog Day. You were brought you were brought up in a mosh pit story on Saturday night. I yeah. feel like it was you and Honey Badger were involved. Uh <laughs> Is that does that sound right? Uh, I have a mosh pit incident, and I've also been to a concert with Honey Badger, but okay. they aren't related. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I I don't know. They were talking about they were they were doing the brackets for the uh vir- the interactive tournament that RWA is doing, and uh, they're just like, "Have you seen her in a mosh pit?" And uh, and your name got brought up. I'm like, I, I gotta okay. I need to follow. Uh, I need to follow up with that. But <laughs> so we're on before we go to break. Very important update mm-hmm. from the official WWE Twitter account. Congratulations to Rob Gronkowski, the current WWE 24-7 champion, on his return to football. <laughs> per the rules of the 24-7 championship, Gronk must defend his championship at all times in any location. He could be celebrating a touchdown pass from Tom Brady oh, anytime, no. anywhere. I love this. Oh my god, I love this. So I I we need a return to wrestling for Lawrence Taylor. Yep. Yes. 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 So or he, failing that, Steve Mungo McMichael. So he was returning the football, but did he not just sign a two year contract with the WWE? Maybe, Maybe he got furloughed. Yeah, he yeah, maybe they just are like, yeah, hey, his contract. Yeah. No, no, I th- I think that would have been bigger news if he was furloughed. Yeah. Okay. If they Fair. if they didn't get rid of Ronda Rousey, who has legitimately said she's not coming back. Yeah, yeah, and has been very nasty about it actually. So oh, she was nasty about it when she was there. So she was, but she's getting re really nasty about it. Uh, apparently. So yeah, I mean, using the F word. I, I don't. I don't ever need to see her again. No, no, she she has left her mark, and now FS1 will just replay that whenever I, they want. I say stain, huh? I say stain. She left her stain. She left her stain. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's. I'm not. Mark. I'm not that. I'm not that bad on it. Yeah, and Tina's reminding us. Well, you know, the NFL is on yeah. Fox, so she wouldn't even tap out for Becky. No, no. Well, you know what you can't, you shouldn't tap out for some good pizza. Uh, our good friends at Slice on Broadway still rolling here in the Pittsburgh area. If you're around, I know uh, I, I've been hearing from uh, getting messages, people, uh, tweets and such. Uh, they are you guys out there are supporting our good friends, local business and Slice on Broadway in this crazy time. Uh, I know they've been pretty busy every time I've dropped in there and uh, uh, good to see it. Four locations here in the Pittsburgh area supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for the good good majority of the last 10 years of this show uh, so please go support the people that support good wrestling podcasts or wrestling podcasts uh, at sliceonbroadway.com hey we're going to come back with some sort of big question some sort of more wrestling talk probably I, I know I got one negative story to, to dive into here but we'll see what else we got we got to look for happy stuff we need to stop with the negative stories right Mike this got to be your sure. happy your good wrestling news show or <laughs> something. Sorry, Krasinski. Uh, but <laughs> we will be right back after this with more. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. 
It's a wrestling mayhem show. The Wrestling Mayhem Show. You that whole sound bite. This is Devoy, and you are listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Take two. We are back. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron. We got Mad Mike. We got Sean Phoenix. And we got uh, Pluto the Iguana is joining yes. us. Yes. I think it's our first l- lizard uh, guest on the show. So this is great. Uh, <laughs> so Wait, first lizard guest? Do we count Chess Flexor? Mm, <laughs> good point. Good point. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and technically, we've had Drago. We did have Drago make a cameo on the show. We had Drago, so okay. And for those that, those that weren't there, we we're talking to Christian Joseph. They were in the season three um, uh, before it premiered at the season three set. Drago was there, and we asked him how the bathrooms were. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so technically, Pluto, you are a second lizard guest. Yes. How was your bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> and we bring it all together <laughs> so uh boy but anyways that leads me to my big question listen there was a good old day before PETA um where and we talked about last night uh, uh you know we remember jake the snake roberts with the snake mike one of your first wrestling moments is that snake viciously attacking macho man actually uh my first wrestling moment was your, yes islands just just pure, and pure animal on man violence, apparently. <laughs> and just and like I was into it. And here we yeah. are. Um, and of course, uh, I think we, we did reference a Ricky the Dragon Steve, but with his uh a kimono dragon, and I remember like there was a big thing about like you had Frankie the Bird, you had the British Bulldogs, brought Matilda. Like there were a lot of animals in wrestling. So today. If you if we were in a world where animals in wrestling could mix as they did in the eighties, what would you like to see in wrestling? Like, say, as a wrestling mascot, come to the ring. Other than no, no, I'm just going to leave that open. I'm not going. I'm not going to disqualify that. I think in my head, wow. actually. <laughs> oh wow, that's a good one, Sorg. Now, question: Do they have to be these wrestlers' actual pets, or or are we free form it here? We can free form it. It's fine. It's fine. Like what what works, right? Okay. Like, I got one. Like if Sean could come out with the iguana on his shoulder, breathing fire, would actually be <laughs> fucking dope. Let's be honest about that. <laughs> I don't think he would like that too much. But... No. Um, I would like to see the main event come out with an actual lion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wait, yes. don't they? But I guess yeah. Technically, well, they do. I mean, you know. I mean, that, wait. What's your a problem with more, the, what with you a more s- less trained lion? A what? less trained. A less trained. Oh, a less trained way with le- yeah. lion than Liddy. Okay. Okay. Well, that that Liddy is very, good. very housebroken. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I didn't. I didn't have to clean up anything when he was here for Mayhem Mania. So I, I mean, just saying. So <laughs> when I when I was training, I said that I wanted my wrestling persona to be uh, a homage to Jake the Snake Roberts, and I wanted to travel with my iguana. My name would be Clifford the Lizard Roberts. <laughs> just so I can, just so I can come out with my iguana and travel the world with my pet. <laughs> Did you pitch that to Quinn? Uh, I think I mentioned it in the um, in our Facebook group at the time. Uh-huh. And someone pointed out that, like, nah, lizards aren't really scary. Your Lord of Jake Roberts was he could put a scary snake on you. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. You just need a kimono dragon. Those things are huge. Yeah, right, yeah. They can kill people. <laughs> oh, there's already some good stuff in the chat room, but I want to leave the mad bike to get one here All before right, we get uh, to that. I, uh, this one, uh, I'm, I'm torn, so I'm going to say both of them, either in the chat. That's fine. Um, I want either Alexa Bliss to come to the ring riding Larry Steve. <laughs> Her pig. For those of you who don't Wait, know how big is the pig? I thought it was small. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. This pig, I guarantee, weighs more than her at this point. Oh, jeez. Yeah, because she's yeah, like she's Daryl. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I want Alexa Bliss to ride Larry Steve to the ring. Mm-hmm. Like at WrestleMania. <laughs> Only like, at WrestleMania. I, I, I want that fucker to gallop down that ramp. Like like the fucking scene in Son in Law. Like that's that's what I want. <laughs> um, or conversely, I want uh Sasha Banks to get a new tag team partner, and that would be her dog Ryu Maivia. But Ryu also has the blue hair. Mm. He's wearing the same wig and does the same motions. <laughs> it's like that video. Like he, like he stands up like Snoopy and he's like, like yeah, I, I, that's those are those are my those are my options. It's related, but nothing to do with wrestling. I I, I was playing Journey to, to the Savage Planet, this new game that's on Xbox Game Pass. That's delightful, by the way. And you wake up from your your cryo freeze while you land on this new planet, and they're like, "Hey, pick an Im- the image of yourself, so we make sure you're not insane." And unbeknownst to me, you're picking your character. <laughs> so I pick- <laughs> so later on, I'm like running, and I'm like, "Why am I breathing so weird?" And it's like, "Why is it like I'm panting?" And then Missy goes, "You picked the dog." <laughs> <laughs> And you're in a full spacesuit, so you don't see the person, but you oh, hear. Wait, wait. You inadvertently made a Cosmo the Astronaut video game? Yep. Yeah, I did. It's Excellent. Fantastic. Excellent. And now that's my choice, and I have to roll with it. I'm just like, I'm going to get the dog and see if it thinks I'm crazy. It was like, no, you're a fucking dog in a spacesuit. That's how you're going to play this game, and sound effects are going to represent that. Well, all right. <laughs> so. But, but, Sorg, the question remains. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy, Sork? Are you a good boy, Sork? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so from the chat room. Oh, uh, from the chat room, actually, Matt Carlin's uh, Dawn Castle needs a real peacock. I roll yeah, that good. back. Yes, but also, I also want to see him riding an ostrich to the ring. Yeah, because why not? Because Either that or just led to the ring by a swarm of flamingos. Mm. <laughs> And the lizard's back. He's back. <laughs> Selena Vega with a python, says Tina. Someone's been watching some Britney Spears concerts. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, Alex Miller says, I want Heavy Miss Jr. to come out with a pig or a cow. Okay. 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 Um, Otis riding a cow to the ring would be pretty great. You know, since we're in these closed set situations. I was going to say, now's the time to do it. Yeah, you don't have to worry about crowds or getting them spooked or anything. If you want to do like an epic animal thing, like and there's plenty of weird wildlife life uh private uh zoos in Florida, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, there's a whole documentary about private Carol Baskin. Carol fucking Baskin. Uh yeah. Drew what Drew McIntyre as uh William Wallace is better than the Triple H adaptation from WrestleMania 21. Just saying. Ooh, mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah, um, and, and, and in that commercial, Rick Flair rode a donkey. He did ride yeah. a donkey. He did. Um, mm-hmm. Best animal wrestling uh, uh, connection I remember is the Roman Coliseum WrestleMania. Okay. Because it, uh, sure. uh, Heenan also, I think, rode a donkey backwards. Uh, yes. But there were ostriches. There were... You know things like that. There was a a a a uh, I think a hawk or something or a vulture, uh, vulture. Uh, along with Undertaker, right? Yeah, um, it, was a vulture. it was like it was a very animal centric wrestling. It, it was an ominous entrance too. Like to me, that's still one of Taker's best WrestleMania entrances, mm-hmm. and it didn't need to be at nighttime to do it. No, no. Like like, like the fact that he didn't walk. He was pulled to the ring on a chariot by druids, and there was just a vulture, and he just stood. It was great. Yeah. That was a Changing real up the room. Apparently, Ruth Podner said that uh, 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 Sammy Zayn with a kangaroo. Oh, God. Well, no. <laughs> Isn't that Matt Hardy's gimmick? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Matt, Hardy, Matt Hardy trained with a kangaroo. He did. Uh, uh, so Smoking Joe. Yep. Yeah, Smoking Joe. Smoking Joe the kangaroo. Really? Did you see the uh, Matt Hardy proposal video? 
where no. they they spliced in uh, where a- a- AW like a week or two ago. Uh, uh, they were you know he he was kind of promo on 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 the elite or not the elite the uh, inner inner circle and Jericho and all them, and uh, he starts into the promo, but then like in this version of it he rolls into talking to the girl on the couch who's by the way named Des- Dusty with an eye. <laughs> and <laughs> so the transition was interesting and turned into a proposal video <laughs> and they have the reaction spliced in with the, the the footage and everything it's it, it's on matt hardy's instagram is where i saw it but i'm sure it's everywhere else too for for matt hardy so um that was delightful if you will uh <laughs> god this is this is where i'm at uh so uh, wonderful. wonderful all right what's going on in florida um so <laughs> damn it damn it florida uh well the biggest thing and we haven't talked about on, on one of these standard mayhem shows is uh uh black wednesday as it was called last week uh many a talents were let go and already i think it wasn't uh drake maverick was supposed to have an announcement or something tonight wasn't he oh, oh he's he was he didn't have an announcement he's just saying tune in Oh, he's not. He's 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 let go, but he's not done. He's like, oh, he's he's still in the cruiserweight title tournament, right? Yeah, now. yeah. So, yeah. so 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 that's cool to see. But he's already doing promos with uh, uh EC3, who was also let go. Mike EC3, Drake Maverick, let go from WWE. I know this is an important factor for you. Your thoughts? Uh, see, I want I want them to do well. I don't know if I want them to go to AEW. I don't think they have to. Um, yeah, but see, the thing is, if they don't go to AEW, I most likely will not be watching them. Yeah, just because of TV. I get it. Because, because of TV and because I watch enough wrestling as it is. Um, I also worry about AEW salivating over how many people are now available to them. Mm-hmm. because. AEW has a hard time pushing a lot of the talents that they have now that aren't people from other companies. Right. Right. And like, I would say, because right now, like the, the last world title matches have all been guys from WWE. The only time it's been someone that was even homegrown and, you know, hangman page isn't even really homegrown. Mm-hmm. Was the first title match they ever had? Uh, but well, why why are you refuting him being a homegrown? I mean, he's not because because Hangman Page was like he was in ROH, he was in New Japan. Yeah, like, but like everybody, like almost everybody in that first wave was uh, Darby Allen, right? Right. MJF. Like uh, what I'm saying is the people who who first got major TV exposure from AEW have not been showcased as well as they should be. Mm-hmm. And I'm uh, has the gentleman with no legs been used once? What? Wait, the Remember one... Remember the guy that does, doesn't have legs? Was he the guy oh. that was in Impact for a bit? No, like... Okay, so he wrestled at uh, Wrestle uh, WrestleMania weekend against my buddy Tony Deppin. And then they signed him. He was in the the one uh, battle royal for All In. Was that the name of the first unofficial pay per view? Oh, hmm. He was in that, and then they signed him. And I don't believe they've used him once. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of random signings from those first announcements that never came yeah to anything. Like you, what did you do? I he was gonna be um, the uh, higher power of the Dark Order. I'm like, that would have been genius. Like. Rather than bring someone in that no one knows, Mm -hmm. have this guy with no legs who's pissed off at the world that has all these people do his bidding. That makes sense to me. But what do I know? (laughs) (laughs) I I like that. But and and I and I mean WWE does the same thing. They sign people and you never see them again, right? Um, Yeah. And they get let go, and you're like, oh, that's where they've been. Um, So I mean, AEW doesn't have the systems that they do in place. Uh, Are we? and you're unaware of he's popped up on dark even uh since probably right yeah i don't believe he has yeah as far it, as I, 
I mean, it's like things like like Nyla Rose disappeared for like six months, and you're like, well, where where did she go? You know, <laughs> it was she's, you know, did she get? I don't think she got injured at the time, but it's like, you know, maybe she had other obligations. Who knows? You know, it's like you guys record once a week, so I don't know what obligations get in the way at this point, right? Um, so I I don't know. It's it's they're a young company. I think this is a young company thing. I mean, they're going to make their mistakes. And um, and I think they've made less of them than other young companies that the leader of one young uh, former young company now came up with money in the bank in a building. Uh, it, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I I don't know. It, it, it's like some of them are shocking, but some of them are not really shocking. You wonder how much of this was probably going to be the actual let go cycle for this time of year. Right. Because we usually get a dump. Right, uh, we have not gotten that recently, though. That, no. Yeah, it's been a while, right? No, not not in, not in a not in a good while. Yeah, and nothing not that significant, right? But I mean, most of the people who were there were again underutilized, not really on TV. Revival was let go a year uh, a week ago, uh, for one reason or another. Um, you know, I, I it it does feel like a little bit of just a, a general clean house, and it did come as, on the day of the furloughs, so. I don't know. It, but, it, but there were some instances like the people who were called in for Raw mm-hmm. and let go. Did that really need to happen? Like, did No Way Jose really need to come fly all the way from across the country for a five minute squash? Right. But the people to fly back home and get fired over the phone. And I imagine the people that are organizing who comes in for Raw are not the ones that select who gets let go. I don't necessarily. It's a big company. It's a big company. Yeah, I know. So, like, they, and Sarah Logan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Monday when they did Raw, there might not have been as strong of an inkling that this is where I was going to go. Mm. So, a, a lot is changing very quick right now. I mean, look at. Uh, uh, you know the XFL situation, which is still developing apparently. Um, as the uh, what, what was it, the GM of the you know or president, yeah, the, 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 the GM of the whole league is now going to be suing. Uh, yeah, wrong, uh, wrongful termination. He's saying so, um, and that's an unfortunate situation. And and I you know I still think I, I don't think XFL would have folded as quickly if things were. Oh, I don't think it would have folded at all. They no. actually have. No, they were doing fine. It, it, this is just the world change. Um, and, and they had and they're and it's just like they threw in the towel because to do something like that. Um, and I think also like, you know, all these all these all these I'm gonna say characters, but. So many of these, like, I don't know if it was a reaction to things, but I found myself as I talked to you last night about watching Zach, uh, Zach Ryder and, and um I almost called him his other name, uh, Kurt Hawkins' uh, uh, wrestling podcast videos. Uh, like, they have something to work off of, you know? Like, yeah. they have a, a, a base on that. And plus, you have Zack Ryder, who pretty much invented, not invented, there were some before him, but, but popularized the use of, you know, well, YouTube. He was kind of the first one to really yeah. use it. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. Hardy, Matt Hardy perfected it. Yes. Matt Hardy perfected off of what Zach Breyer had started. Same with Miz and Morrison. Mm-hmm. Remember, the dirt sheet was a WWE.com exclusive. Absolutely. But Zach Ryder was really the one who started like using the internet to get himself over. He popularized it. There were some people that were doing things. Johnny Gargano was doing his power hour, remember? We talked to him when he was first starting that up. Uh, Cesaro was doing coffee with C- uh, C- uh, 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 Claudio's Cafe. Which I love that it's still his uh, 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 username on the uh, up up down down videos, Mike. I yeah. noticed. Yeah, on Twitch. That's his, <laughs> that's his Twitch handle, Claudio's Cafe. I love Ooh. it. I mean, these guys have platforms, and and I you know I'm not worried. I, I'm not worried about them other than the big hit. Uh, the Canellis has already started a podcast or returned to one. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody has platforms. I think most of these guys are gonna and girls are gonna land on their feet just fine. So I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you know. Sean and and everybody else that's that's been working their way up and creating something and now getting flattened by this, you know. So I mean, but Sean, I mean, uh, of course, you're one of the people that's been uh, really good about uh, keeping that presence up uh, during yeah. this downtime as well, which is also very very important. Right. So. Right. 
but you know your Dan Houses and your War Horses, uh, uh, making up for the WrestleMania they didn't get to really kind of uh, right. potentially explode. Although Dan Housen's campaign lately to get hired by Ring of Honor again has been tremendous. <laughs> I saw I saw uh, work up in the last couple of days, so um, but I don't know. It's it's a weird world, and I'm now watching uh, uh, Bobby Heenan riding the uh, oh, it was a camel he was riding to the ring backwards. The camel, that's right. yes, yes. By the way, he was, he was supposed to be on the float with the Vestal Virgins, but that yes, was Macho. That was Macho. Way, and I say this every time it's brought up. WrestleMania Nine still has the best announced team of any WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, they do. Who was it? Jim Ross before he became terrible and when he cared. Jim Ross's uh, debut, I believe, with the Jim WWF. Ross's debut in WWF. Bobby Heenan and Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, geez, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a murderer's row of commentary. It's, yeah. it's perfect. It's, um, and it's also, it, it was referenced later when Jim Ross was, uh, going heel in the attitude era i believe like he referenced that like i started in a yeah, toga yeah, like, yeah i can be man here you made me wear a toga yeah like, yeah oh good old days good old days um let's see was there any other news we should touch on for the week i know there was some stuff that's been shared over the last couple of days uh mike you have some animal crossing merchandise i do <laughs> this is actually. important news actually well, no, i mean it's, it's not merchandise i'm not selling shit no but it's um so uh, hold on let me let me boot up my animal crossing i didn't me, know you're hold on let me see i might have it here oh there it is there it is for you guys on the visuals right there oh, good. because now my switch is saying you need something oh good okay um but yeah so i uh i made a a little design mm-hmm. for, for wms in animal crossing and i finally gotten to the point where i can make it public so i put it on our facebook i put it on our twitter if you have animal crossing and you want to make a shirt Support the Mayhem Show. There you go. Or, or do what I do. Just make a sign and then dress like the Tenth Doctor. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, right? Yeah, I, I have a Godzilla and a WMS sign protecting my manor in the, Animal Crossing. Dutters was showing off the Godzilla and Awesome Cast last week. It's great. It breathes fire. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I bought one after that, and I'm like, oh, this is this is fantastic. <laughs> Oh jeez! Um, everybody's watching Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, 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 WWE employees are reporting to the mayor of the town that they're they're being forced to work. Uh, so uh, yeah, everything's going fine in Florida, guys. Everything's going great. Mm-hmm. Everything's going fine in Florida is a statement that has never been true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. The only trip I've been able to make this year was Florida. <laughs> like that's oh, all. So that's all I have. This, and it'll probably be the last trip I take for the next. Well, ho- well, sure. hopefully until October. You were at the last NXT in the before times, in uh, the it, long, long ago. It was technically they did one at the Performance Center with the crowd the next week. No. Yes, oh, it, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, did. Performance Center with the crowd, but that was not due to anything coronavirus related. Yeah. It was just, uh, it was like full sale was already booked. I really hope that's not just how you, you, how you say that from now on. That so, is how I say it from now on. Oh no. You mean how I say coronavirus? Yeah. It all the time. Um, wrestling still getting around. Sports Illustrated actually had an article about, um, indie wrestling, uh, in, in the current, uh, coronavirus issues. Dan Housen, a war horse among, and, uh, amongst others, uh, featured in this. Uh, so please go uh, give that a read. And if you need a good laugh, uh, Riz shared, um, it was about an hour and a half of Jim Ross performing every entrance in Raw versus SmackDown 2006. <laughs> that, that's important content. You're welcome. Um, uh, related, you can also look up Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman performing the iconic entrance. Mm hmm. <laughs> That that is something that you can look up. I think that is actually on up up down down. <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry, I'm catching up on, on stuff over here. Um and uh, <laughs> guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> Mike? Oh boy, I learned a lot. Um, I learned that Chris Jericho doesn't give a fuck how he pours his orange juice. <laughs> 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 
No, he doesn't. No, no, he doesn't. <laughs> and and I I learned I may not like Jake Hager and what he's bringing to AEW, but his kids are adorable. Yeah. I ain't got a friend about that. His kids are fucking adorable. <laughs> God bless them. They 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 did the ear muts thing when he said the word shit. Yes, <laughs> like if, if that, Jake Hager, please stop wrestling. Just be a silent weirdo with adorable children. He if please just be that, and that's fine. That's all you have to do. He even did a bit after he lost, where he went back to his house, and his wife wouldn't let him in the house. No, yes, it's on his Twitter. It's a bit. She 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 opens the door. She's like, "Did you win?" He said, "No, I lost." She said, "Come back when you win." Whoa! And then, like an hour or so later, he took a picture of him at the pool. He's like, "I hopped over the fence." Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> or something like that. Like, I'm like, this is the content I'm here for. <laughs> I want marital strife caused by wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> then we just need to put you on calls with some indie wrestlers. What we know, then <laughs> it's just perfect. Okay, <laughs> it's <laughs> sometimes it's a little too oh, real, Mike. And also, and also, I need to I need to say one more thing because Drake Maverick is no longer in WWE. He is still in my feud of 2020. On Up Up Down Down SmackDown versus Raw, mm -hmm. the feud of Drake Maverick and Drew Gulak. If you haven't seen it, you must. It involves circumcision. Oh yikes! It's it's fantastic. Wow! Wow! Yeah, and it's for the world title too. So I mean, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah. Sh Sean, what did you learn from wrestling this week, or wrestling Twitter, or? <laughs> Or whatever the case may be. I learned how essential pro wrestling can be in the state of Florida. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that, uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of only in Florida could it have been declared, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think it, what an odd coincidence that it's in the state where the performance center is and the only place where WWE can get away with doing these live slash tape shows without crowd like that's a strange coincidence like mm -hmm. surely there's something going on there mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i digress um personally i think they should they should stop you know may, maybe take this time to to take a take a break for the first time in pro wrestling's time just do reruns mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. maybe do an interview show Give the guys time off. The safety should be, you know, the safety of everyone should be very, you know, top, top priority. But I feel like the reason why they're not doing that is because they want to continue to be the longest running weekly episodic wrestling TV show in mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why I think they're doing it. But well, I mean, the weird thing is, it's not like anyone's close to catching them. Mm -mm. Exactly, right? Like, the only thing that's close to catching them is SmackDown, and they're about four hundred episodes away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So stupid. And it's you know, it's money. It's this. It's it's trying to stop the bleeding. Um, there there was concern over their contracts. To do a, there are ways to do a live show. Yeah. Like I'm telling you, I there is a massive benefit. I think to running old matches with new commentary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that I think there's a massive benefit to that. Like like you do your money in the bank qualifying matches. Do the ones you have left. Those will be your main events for every show. Mm -hmm. Cuz you have a couple matches left and maybe like what ramp it down. Yeah. Like a, like keep it very minimal. Do one live match per show. And live is in quotes obviously. But then like runs run like i'm saying best of 205 live matches best of nxt uk matches highlight shit people haven't watched yep right like highlight stuff people haven't watched because there's some good shit on those other shows like one of my favorite matches last year was drake maverick versus mike canellis who are both no longer with the company mm -hmm. in a new match yeah. and they 
tore the house down. Yep. Like they were fantastic. Um, and 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 they are doing this to certain ex- uh, extents. ESPN, of course, was running all the WrestleManias. Um, FS1 still running stuff. Uh, they run ruthless aggression shows. They're running in the best ofs. Um, they're running wars and all this stuff. They're running what? Uh, the twenty four documentaries. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, they're 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 doing that there, and you know, sports sports networks are in a bad bad spot right now uh, through all this too. And ESPN uh, aired a horse tournament. Wow. <laughs> like that's you know they're bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know they're hurting for content. Yep. And um and people are feeding for it and and to see them reach for wrestling and 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 taking advantage of those relationships. I mean that's that's I think that's great. That definitely helps the sports side and um that definitely helps you know otherwise. And you reach a lot of people that do not do not have that network access. So it's a great advertisement for them. So I don't know. Uh, what did I learn from wrestling this week? Shoot, I did not come up with mine, did I? Um, <laughs> I, I I learned I learned that um, well, I, one I I did not learn, and I want to question if Sami Zayn, uh, for his wisdom tooth issue, uh, went to Britt Baker's office. Uh, but I think hers hers is a more of a cosmetic surgery actually. Uh, that that she's involved with. Uh, he had his wisdom teeth um, <laughs> pulled. And, and the quote, he says, in lighter news, I had my wisdom teeth taken out last week, so I've been on an all-pudding diet for days, and now I'm ripped to shreds. Hmm. So there you go. On that diet. What's that? I have to get on that diet. There you go. All-pudding all the time, right? Yeah, I definitely put on some quarantine weight. Let me tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So have, you, have you gained the COVID-19? Yes, I have. I have. <laughs> you need a minute for that. <laughs> I do you did that. Um, yeah, well, I, you know, I can't wait for that shirt, first wrestling show back where everybody's wearing t-shirts, you know? <laughs> I, just, Here's the thing. I was I just started like working, like I got on a diet plan, I got a that's you know, right. trainer, to like lose <laughs> the injury weight. <laughs> and then it's like literally 2 weeks later gyms are closed. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Sean Phoenix, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, you have pros wrestling tees and all that kind of stuff. Where can people support you in this downtime so you can go stock up on pudding? Uh, <laughs> pro wrestling tees slash X Sean X Phoenix. It's my username for everything: Twitter, Instagram, AOL Instant Messenger, MySpace, which no longer exists, just like AOL Instant Messenger. You know, if you find me one place, you'll find me another place. So there you go, Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter. Also, go to TUBI.TV, search for Lucha Underground, enhance your life by watching people and skeleton ninjas try to murder each other. Absolutely. We still, as usual, have a lot of great streaming content for you this week. Your Jag Off Live is coming back for a fifth Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So please tune in for that over the uh, Jag Off uh, 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 Facebook page. And it'll be on the Sorgatron Media properties as well. If you follow us on the uh, uh, them on the Twitter, on the uh, probably the YouTube and uh, Twitch, uh, that should be a simulcast across all of those. A comedian and artist will be on there supporting them uh, from the sponsors. And uh, we will also be back with Listen to Your Parents, uh, Mainstream Matt's hot new podcast uh, Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on the uh, Listen to Your Parents Facebook page. Uh, and uh, we should be returning. I do not officially have a lineup because I have not been asking until Wednesday of the week to see uh, where everybody's at mentally. Uh, but we will we'll be uh, attempting to have another quarantine panel for Indie Mayhem show on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And it's just a loose chat. It's uh, just a, hey, guys, how you hanging? You know, like we just did with uh, Sean here a little bit. Uh, so um, maybe maybe I'll go find people with pets. You know, be a pet cat. Yeah, that actually would be good, right? So, um, and uh, that's it. I think that's all we have scheduled right now. There will probably be a gaming cast on uh, Friday again. We've had a lot of fun with Rocket League, and uh, there's a potential maybe wrestling promotion cast. We're still kind of figuring out if there's something we can do with that. So we could have something pop up on Saturday as well. Uh, and we're not going to stop with that. We're going to keep uh, streaming as long as we can stream and make sure uh, we all get together and keep doing this. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, sticking through with all the craziness. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room all night long, including Podner, Alex, both Alex's, actually, Tina, 
uh, and everybody else throughout the night. Matt Carlin, Zeke Mercer hanging out in there. Hashtag Zeke Squad and uh, so much more. Zeke, Zeke, do a promo. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Coronavirus! Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.